if you'd like to have some opening comments and we'll take questions. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, uh, thanks, Ben. Yeah, I really, again, wanted to thank our medical staff and, and personnel. They have done a, a great job of helping to keep us uh, safe and uh, giving us the, the ability to continue to practice and, and play. Sally Nogle, um, Dr. Coban, and, and the entire medical staff has done an outstanding job um, in these very in these very tough times, and and so uh, really appreciate and want, wanted to acknowledge them. Um, and like I, as I said last week, you know we have to give ourselves uh, a, a a better chance to win. You know turnovers, penalties, and field position. You know those things just are 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 very very obvious. That you know if you take care of the ball. Uh, you're penalty free and you win the field position battle you you give yourself a much better chance to, to win and we and and the games that we've lost we haven't we haven't done that um, so the focus this week is going to be on playing complementary football um, that's offense defense and special teams working together um, and along with that that's you know taking care of the football on offense and and taking the ball away on defense you know, uh, winning the field position battle. Um, you know, being a you know being effective on special teams, um, and it really comes down to execution. We did something um, uh, you know different uh, yesterday. We watched the continuous copy of the of the game, the first half of the game, uh, as a as an entire football team. You know, the guys that traveled, um, and you know, usually when you watch the game. You know, you watch it. Uh, you know, offense and defense and special teams separately. Um, and and I've done that. You know, I've done that before. Um, and it gives everyone a, a a better perspective, and it gives it allows the the guys on the other side of the ball to see what's really happening and see how everyone fits in um, to uh, to you know how the, the the pieces to the puzzle fit and how you need to play complementary football and how uh, you know, one side of the ball affects another side of the ball, and also um, shows it shows uh, everyone, you know, how actually close we are to being able to make a play, and that's and so in that regard, it's a it's a, gives the guys better perspective, um, and everyone can see what everyone is doing or not doing, um, and it it may you know it may sound it may sound crazy, but you know it, it. It actually shows you how close you are to, how really close you are to being able to have success on the field on a consistent basis. So, uh, the the team continues to push. We had a good we had a good practice yesterday. Um, you know, attitudes are attitudes are good. You know, we're dealing the truth. So, you know, every, everyone knows what the deal is, um, and we're continuing to evaluate. And work to get better, and and uh, and so, um, thank God that we still have a you know we still have a, a another opportunity to play and practice, so we can, so we can you know to build to, to be the type of team that we know that we can be. Um, so um, I really appreciate you guys coming out today um, on these Zoom deals. I know it can be a, I know it can be a little fatiguing um, at times, but I really appreciate you guys. Um, covering our team and, and, and uh, carrying the message out, you know, to our fans. But we certainly, um, we certainly understand that there's a, there's a, a standard of performance that we are, we have not lived up to on a consistent basis and we're working hard to get to that. Our fans des deserve that. So, um, and we owe it to ourselves to give our, give ourselves the best chance as well. So with that, I'll open up to questions. Thanks, Coach. We'll start with Justin Rose of WXYZ in Detroit. Hey, good afternoon, Mel. Um, have you definitely heard you guys are playing Maryland? What's the status with, with that team at this particular point in time? And um, if, for whatever reason, they wouldn't be able to play this weekend, would you guys look to play someone else? From all indications that, that you know, everything I've been told, um, you know, they're trying to play, and so we're preparing to play. Um, and... Uh, and I know that they, I know that they want to play. You know, I talked to Locks this morning for a long time. We had a good talk. I know they want to play, and so um, we're preparing to play. 
Okay. Just to follow that up, I know you said that uh, the, the consistency hasn't been where you would have liked it to be, but at the same time, with all the factors that come into play, you know, COVID shutting down spring, summer was restricted, fall's been up and down as well. Is this job maybe up to the standard of like how difficult it was going to be with all those factors? Or is there anything that caught you by surprise five weeks into the season? No, I haven't really been caught by surprise um, because, you know, I've been in the first year of a program, uh, you know, even going back to being a player in high school, I think maybe nine times. And so I pretty much know what to expect in the, in the, in year one. And then once, um, once the, we were hit with COVID, then I knew immediately that what the challenges were going to be. Um, and so, um, you know, there, there, there hasn't been any really, any real surprises there. They're just, they're just, you know, they're just challenges and, uh, you know, that we, you know, we have to, we have to adjust and we have to adapt and, you know, we, you know, we, um, you know, we have to do what we can do with, within the parameters and the protocols and all that stuff that, that, that we have. And I really, I really, um, you know, don't believe in, in really making excuses, um, or, you know, or for, for things, I just, I can't, I just can't go there for whatever reason. That's just me. I just don't, I just don't, I just don't do it. I mean, we, you know, we, we have the ability in, in my mind to be able to play better football. If we take care of the ball, um, we cut, you know, we eliminate foolish penalties. Um, we win the field position battle and we, you know, continue to work on our technique and fundamentals and play more physical, physically, then I, you know, I believe that we can have success. Uh, and, and that's with all of the, the COVID and the no spring ball, no off season conditioning program, you know, guys banged up, not in the, you know, guys, you know, playing young guys, all that, with all that being said, I still um, expect us to play better. Our next question goes to Matt Charbonneau of the Detroit News. Mel, I was wondering where you, after you're able to review the, the game film, where you see that, how both quarterbacks played, um, how, how you analyze it after that. And then is this a week where you could see that competition continuing? Could you see making a change there uh, heading into Maryland? Yeah, I mean, there, there was it was a mixed bag with both with both quarterbacks. And so. Um, you know, we're going to, we're going to go through the week. It's really, it's really early in the week. We haven't even put the pads on yet. We'll do that later on today. Um, and, you know, we'll see how it goes. You know, there's nothing set in stone on this team. So, you know, every position is, is an evaluation every day. Um, practice, you know, we watch, I watch every bit of practice tape. You know, I watch the walk-ons, uh, you know, we watch everyone. We're evaluating every, everyone and we're going to, Go with who we think gives us the best chance to win, and and but you know we'll we'll see how the week goes. Um, so, um, you know that's that's how we're approaching it. And and um, and Rocky and uh, Peyton, you know we've communicated what they've been communicated with. So, you know there's there's no gray. You know we know we're gonna we're, how we're gonna go about this week. And just real follow up quickly, is that a tougher call to make when you got a guy like Rocky who's been around and is really respected as a leader in the room is that is it tougher to make that call if you if you feel like you need to or does that not really factor into it no I mean uh all of the all of the calls that we make in terms of who starts games you know they're you know they're uh, they're they're all important you know um and we don't we don't take them lightly and especially at that position so um but you know obviously you know we'll make a decision and, and we'll go I mean that's that's you know, that's the nature of what we're doing. You know, we have to, we have to make decisions based upon the information that we have. And, and that's really, you know, it's a combination of, you know, practice and, and like you talked about, you know, leadership and confidence and, you know, just performance and things like that in the film room and, you know, how, you know, how, how the week is going. So, um, you know, we meet every day and we watch all the film and we talk, we, we, we communicate. So, you know, we'll we'll uh, we'll make a decision, then we'll go. Next question goes to Matt Wenzel with M Live. 
Hey, Mel, uh, obviously the first two weeks, I think 27 points each game, only seven the last two games combined. And you, know, you talk about obviously the turnovers stand out, but is there any point now where you're a month into the season where you can maybe switch up things, what you're doing offensively, like you said on, on Saturday, as far as evaluating everything and then, you know, being maybe, you know, installing more as you get into the season and try and tweak that a little bit. Yeah, it's uh, we're always, you know, every every game uh, we look and we have to evaluate what our opponent, what they do defensively. And then we put together a game plan that we think uh, you know, gives us the best chance to take advantage of of, uh, you know, what they do. Um, and so, uh, you know, we're going to continue. We're going to continue to do that when 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 when, when we look at the tape and we know what the we know what the play is and we know what the assignments are and we see, um, you know, the execution of a play or the lack of execution, like it's obvious uh, to us that there's plays out there to be made and we don't have a lot of margin for error. So if one guy doesn't do what he's supposed to do, we usually don't have a successful play. But even in this, this against Indiana, I mean, we, our players could see it. We could see it. We knew it during the game. It's like there's plays out there, and we just have to execute those those plays. There's not there's not a there's not a scheme issue. It's an execution issue, uh, you know. And being able to being able to you know read the play out, make the play, or uh, you know, or the, make the blocking assignment, or you know, you know, just basically just get the job done on a consistent basis. So. I feel good about our I feel good about our game planning. We need to we're really going to be focused on execution, cutting down on the mental errors, um, you know, and that will give us more consistency, um, you know, and then obviously taking care of the football. You know, you 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 be you be uh, you be shocked as when you watch the coaches copy of some of the plays that are out there that, that we uh, we left on the field. Not to take any credit away from Indiana, you know, they they have a really good football team. But you know, at the same time, you know, you know when we when we execute, you know we're able to we're able to make plays, and that's been against anybody we played. You know, even the first you know, the first drive of the second half of the, of the Iowa game, we we drive down the field and score. It's all by execution. We're just not consistent. And uh, Jaden's a guy that we heard about for more than a year, dating back to previous staff and from players talking about what he did in practice. He obviously gives you a, you know, weapon on offense. What have you seen from him for through a month? Jaden Reed. Yes. Yeah, Jaden is a good player. Yeah, and he's a, he's young and he's learning. He practices hard. Um, he plays with toughness. You know, he's all he's he's a consistent performer. Like you know what you're going to get from him. You know, day in and day out in terms of his effort and. And how he goes about, you know, his practice and things like that. So, um, you know, he's certainly a guy that we look to get the ball to, um, you know, because the key to it is, you know, finding ways to get the ball to to the, your playmakers. And our wide receiver, our wide receiver crew, uh, is a is a, is a crew that we, you know, is a group that we've that have shown that can make plays. And so, uh, but I, I, I like him. I like him as a player. I like being around him. I like, you know, I like coaching him. I like him as a, as a, you know, he's a good team guy. You know, I'm glad we, I'm glad we got him. I'm, I'm uh, really excited about like what, what he can become, you know, how much, you know, as, as he continues to develop as a player, you know, who knows how, how good he can be. Thanks, Mel. Yeah. Our next question goes to Lindsey Huddleston. Hello, Mel. Um, I know you are laser focused on Maryland right now. But considering we're halfway through uh, your first year uh, this season and there's talk of uh, transfer portal and things like that, and you use terms like dealing in truth, what message can you give uh, to the fans about uh, the future talent transition that the Mel Tucker era is going to start to experience? Yeah, we're re uh, that's a great question um, because we're, we're battling and building at the same time as battle and build, battle and build. You know, so um, as we're – developing the team that we have we're also recruiting you know every single day um, to bring in players that we feel like can can help us be successful you know on and off the field so you know we're doing that and then obviously the portal is is uh is part of college football you know you got the you got the high school kids and then you got the 
the undergrad portal guys, you got the grad transfers, you have junior college guys. And so, you know, we're, we're, you know, we look everywhere for, for players that we believe are a good fit for us. Um, and we look to acquire those players. And at the same time, when you evaluate your current team, um, you know, ultimately you're deciding who's a good fit on this team, you know, who, who, who has the, the traits and the characteristics, um, you know, talent, you know, the toughness, mental and physical toughness, you know, the attention to detail, sense of urgency, love of the game, you know, um, you know, who, who has those, those, uh, those traits, that, those characteristics that you need to, to have on your team to be successful. And so, um, you know, ultimately, um, you know, there's, there's transition, not only acquiring guys to the team, but there's also guys that, you know, ultimately, you know, may, may transition out um, just because of, uh, you know, there's a certain type of culture and, and, um, and certain type of, of uh, player that, that we need to have here. And, you know, that's, that's really non-negotiable. So, you know, everything's an evaluation and halfway through the season, um, you know, I, you know, right at this point, we have a pretty good idea of, of, you know, who can do what. And so, um, yeah, obviously, you know, you can anticipate seeing some, some movement on our roster, whether it's, uh, you know, port, portal related or, or otherwise. Okay. And as a very quick follow-up, does that mean, uh, non-traditional Michigan State type players may have an opportunity to play here, or it would just be something uh, that we've seen before. Um, if you could just give me a little more clarification on well, that. Yes, in, in my role, I'm in touch with a lot of young people, and people either say we've heard from a school like a Michigan State or a Michigan, or we haven't even heard from them, but they may be very talented. So, I mean, are you turning over, over every stone, or is it going to be pretty much same places and regions as before? No, 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 no. We 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 turn over we turn over every every stone. Um, we 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 cast a broader net. It's it's a lot more work to do it that way. But we cast a broader net. Um, like if you want to sign twenty five guys, it's typically an eight to one ratio on offers. Like you got to offer two hundred guys. You know we're you know we we're we're always well over three hundred offers per per class. Um, and so. Um, you know, they could, they could, it could be West, West Coast, East Coast. We go down to the South. Um, obviously, we want to start here in our state. We're fighting, we're fighting for the hearts and the minds of our high school coaches and our in-state prospects as well. Um, just to to show them that you know what the what the different you know what the difference is now, what you know how we do things and compared to the past, and so. Um, and anyone that has a player, um, you know, that we, we evaluate those, we evaluate those players and try to get back to those, those high school coaches or anyone as fast as we can. And, uh, and we're always on the phone, um, you know, just looking for, you know, looking for any, any, anyone that we think might have a chance and we get the film evaluated. And, uh, and, and so we're, we're, you know, we're looking everywhere for, for guys every day, actually. Every day. All right. Thank you for that coach. Have a good day. Yep. You too. Thanks. Next question goes to Rico Beard with 97 won the ticket in Detroit. Hey coach, uh, you spoke about the quarterbacks earlier in, in this press conference and, mm -hmm. you know, seven points in the last two games. Are you pretty much going to work this out and figure this out with Rocky and, and Peyton Thorne, or will there be opportunities for Theo Day and Noah Kim to maybe get some action? Yeah, that, it, that's a possibility, you know, because, you know, it's uh, those guys take reps in practice too, you know, so that there's certainly possibilities for guys to, 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 to step in there. I mean, you see, you see guys at other positions that are getting opportunities to play, you know, guys that are showing up. I mean, like you see, uh, you see uh, Jello Gross out there playing the nickel spot. It's a true freshman. You see, you see, uh, you saw Davion Williams out there. You see the emergence of Jalen Hunt. You know, we, we're seeing guys playing different positions. We're seeing, you know, freshman receivers that are getting opportunities to play. There's guys, uh, you know, tight ends that are playing like Tyler Hunt and guys like that that are, you know, 
getting opportunities to play. You see guys on special teams that are starting to show up. And so uh, Petrowski was in the game last last week and, and did, a, did a good job in a couple of plays he was in. So, you know, he may have a, you know, he earned some more, some more, uh, some more reps and things like that. So, you know, it's, it's uh, nothing set in stone. I mean, it's can, it's compete and show us what you can do and earn your spot, you know, earn, earn your playing time, you know, earn your, your right to be able to even stay on the team, you know, cause this is not a, this is not like a recreational type of situation. This is compete to play, compete to stay. Thanks coach. Next question goes to Kellen Buddy with WILX. Hey, Coach, going back to Justin's questions at the beginning, is, is there any concern uh, if this game still goes on with the, the COVID scare at Maryland? Is there any concern with your team going down there that there, there could be a bit of uh, a lack of control of the virus and, and that, you know, it might spread a little more when you guys are down there? Yeah, I don't, I don't have that type of concern because uh, of our, our medical, you know, our medical uh, protocols and, and, you know, what the big 10 is, is, has done, you know, overall, and we're tested sick. We do antigen tests six days a week. We've been doing that since I think September 30th. Um, and so, um, you know, our, you know, myself and our, our medical staff and our doctors and everything, we're not, you know, we're not, we're not going to, put ourselves into in a situation that we think is unsafe you know so if we uh if in fact we're able to play and we we travel and we go there that means that we feel we feel like we're going into a and going into a safe environment so right now we are preparing to play I mean like there's not even crossing my mind that we're not going to play you know that's we're, we're not even thinking about that we're you know we're watching the tape meeting installing you know getting ready to practice in a couple hours and, and and we're ready you know getting ready to go it's no different than any other week for us thanks coach. to jennifer hammond with fox 2 in detroit hey coach nice to see you hope you and your family are doing okay during all this thank craziness you. thank um, you we're doing we're doing well thank you good um so what i'm really curious to know is when you're in a program and you guys obviously greater than where the record is right now how do you what do you how do you sell to them what there is to play for and to get young kids motivated especially in such a crazy time you know with not even knowing perhaps if certainty and craziness going on and where the record is how do you sell to them we've got a lot to play for and it's important yeah, you were cutting in and out a little bit, uh, but I, I think I got the gist of it. And so, um, yeah, it's with this group of guys. That's not uh, that's not uh, hard to do. Like I said, when I, the day I the, the first day I got here, if you love football, I probably like you. And um, you know, guys that love football, you know, it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, what, it doesn't matter. The circumstance they just won't play and so you know that's the type of group that we have like I said earlier they 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 continue to work hard they these guys will not quit um and uh and they're engaged and you know they you know they're, they're they know that there's room to get better and they can when you show when you watch when you sh when you show them the tape of a game or a practice and you say okay listen this is what you were supposed to do if you would, if you would do that, then you see what see what what success we, you know, you should have or we should have, and it's right there. It's just plain as day. And so, if a player believes that he can act, that he can actually do that, then I don't see why he wouldn't be motivated to 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 come to practice and work on that and be ready to to have an opportunity on Saturday so that he can do it in the game on a consistent basis. So. Um, you know, motivating guys that are mo guys that are that are not motivated. If there's if there's guys that are not motivated, someone asked me last week after the game, how do you um, keep the attention? If I've got a uh, 
if I can't, if, if there's an attention issue or you're not motivated and you're not, you're not going to be even on, at practice, you're not going to be in the game, you're not even traveling, like you're not going to be on the team, you know, because it's not about, it's not about having to talk you on the plan or motivate you to play and things like that. That's not what this is. That's, that, that's not even, that's not even part of it. You know, guys that are here want to play. They want to practice. We're going to go out. We're going to put the pads on today. We're going to put the pads on tomorrow. We're going to go out there. We're going to play. We're going to work on our physicality, our pad level, our hands, our, our fundamentals, you know, and and guys are going to give effort. And if they don't give effort and they don't want to be, then they're going to be excused. You know, they're going to be removed. We don't have time for that. You know, this is Big Ten football. I mean, you, you're here for a reason to play. You know, it's just not an optional situation out of it's a requirement that you go out there and you give great effort to get better if you're not out there to get better you're not out there to, to compete and be the best then you're wasting time so why waste time just you know just just you know cut bait but i'm not i'm not i'm not saying that but they know that i mean they know that and we talk about it you know you step in here become come here ready to work and and uh, and get better if, if you're not ready to do that, then this is not for you. Because this is not easy. If it was easy, everyone would be doing it. Thank you very much. Our next question goes to Audrey Dahlgren with WLNS. Hi, Mel. I was just wondering, um, going back to the attitude and dealing in the truth a little bit, what are those conversations like at practice as you approach week five with a one in three record? Is it obviously, you know, you need to work harder? I mean, just what are what are those truth conversations that you're speaking to? Right. The the record does the record doesn't matter. You know, it's a new it's a new week, you know. Every, you know, it's all about, you know, what do we have to do today to get better? And then you just, you hone in on that, um, you know, specifically what you talk to the players, you know, what technique, or is it uh, a better understanding of the scheme, you know, note-taking. Uh, we talk to guys about rest and recovery, sleep, you know, what, what are you doing in the weight room? You know, all, all those types of things, uh, you know, um, you know, mental toughness you know, you know, pushing through, you know, you know, bumps and bruises, you know, all those types of things. Those are the types of conversations and then watching the film and then and showing them when they do it right. I mean, guys, like, guys like to see themselves improve, you know, because that's what it's all about. So, um, you know, it's just, you know, it's, it's, you're not trying to trick guys. I mean, that's when you, one thing that, that, that I do know and I've learned over the years and I've always known this, you cannot fool players, college or pro players. You can't fool them. You can't trick them. You know, there's no, you know, you, there's no, you can't sprinkle magic dust on them, whatever. You just got to tell them, hey, this is what it is and show them a pathway to, to, get, to get better. And as long as the, the players know that you know what you're doing and you're telling them the right thing, they, then they, they'll listen to you. And then, um, and then they, and then if they put the work in, and you're, and you're putting the work in with them, they're putting the work in, then they, they improve, you know. And if, if they have the ability to, 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 to do it, you know, some guys can't do it, you know. And then you find that out too. But, um, you know, the, that's part. That's the I, I look for. I'm, maybe I'm, maybe I'm a little, maybe I'm a little crazy. But I actually, I actually like. Um, you know, trying to figure things out and, and trying to find a way to get better when it's tough, you know, and uh, and everything's hitting the fan. I like you know, like kind of hunkering down and digging in with my guys and and uh, kind of circling the wagons, just focusing on getting better and practicing and blocking everything else out. You know, I really, I really enjoy that because once you start to turn the corner, um, and you see, you see that hap you see the improvement as a team. There's no better feeling than that. There's, that's what you know. There's, there's a lot of gratification. That there's a sense of accomplishment. So we're not focused on our record. We're focused on our next opponent and getting better. Thank you. We have time for a, a few more questions before players join us after coach. We'll go to Chris Salier, the Detroit Free Press. Mel, good to see you. Um, I, I kind of wanted to touch base with you on a couple things. One, uh, we saw Jalen Hunt go off. 
with, with an injury. Is that a long-term situation with him? And are there any other long-term injuries that you have right now? Yeah, uh, I saw him. I saw I saw him saw him go off as well. You know, I was out there with him, and and then he was able to practice yesterday. And any other long-term issues injury-wise? Yeah, we've got some guys that are, that is, is taking a while for them to get back. You know, but. Um, you know, we're going to go with the guys that we that, that are available. The guys that are out are working hard to get back as soon as they can. Um, you know, they do a great job in the training room. We check, you know, we have uh, we meet with Sally every morning um, at 930 and uh, she gives us a report and we know, you know what guys are doing, what their what their plans are, what modifications we, we need to make in the weight room for them and working hard, you know, to get them back. But you know, some guys, uh, depend, depending on their situation, can get back sooner than others. And as a follow, um, we know two guys with Jordan Reed and with uh, Justin Stevens opted out. Have there been any other players who have opted out for the rest of the season? Yeah, I believe uh, Khalifa opted out. And then um, we had uh, just recently we had uh, a couple of freshmen that have opted out. You know, for COVID related reasons. And, and so we're supporting them. And, you know, obviously, like this goes back to what we talked about months ago, everybody's got to make a decision. And we're supporting our players on decisions that they make relative to COVID. Thanks, Mel. Yep. Our next question goes to Nick Baumgartner with The Athletic. Hey, Mel, thanks for doing this. Uh, you said something earlier that kind of caught my ear. Nine different times you've been in the year one of a, of a football program, whether it's a player or coach, that feels like a pretty high number for a guy who isn't very old. Uh, I'm curious, what is the thing that maybe, I know they're all different, but what, what is the piece of the year one process that takes the most uh, time on task, I suppose, to, uh, to get together? That's a great question. Um, culture is is uh, is the number one thing that's the main thing is you hammering the culture, whether you need to change the culture or shift the culture. Um, it's about how we want to, how we want to go about, you know, how we want to go about our business on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, you set the expectations, set the standards, whether they're in the weight room, you know, in the classroom on the, you know, on the field, you know, just, you know, all those things, um, you know, culture is the, is the number one number one thing could be because that's the foundation upon which you build your program on. Um, you know, there's a set of standards and a way of doing things, and you recruit to that. Um, and you hold guys accountable to that, and you hammer it every day, and that's uh, and you have to be relentless with that because, you know, that's changing behavior you know, and habits and things like that is that, you know, that's not something that you can, that happens overnight, especially with a, a large, a large number of, of players when you're dealing with like a hundred, over a hundred players, you know, and then, and then, and support staff around them and all that is, that's the number one thing is, is the culture. Thanks, Bill. Yeah. If we have time for a couple more. We'll go to Jim Comproni with Spartan Magazine. Hey, Mel, thanks for taking the call, uh, the, the question. I appreciate it. Hey, you've, um, can you talk about, expand a little bit on some of the building blocks you've seen in terms of personnel players that, young players that have come to the forefront a little bit? It looks like in the defensive line, there's some young players that are making players on a consistent basis. Can you expand on the progress they're making? Yeah, I, you know, we have some stoutness in our, in our interior, our interior defensive line. Um, you know, some guys are starting to come around. Um, which is really good to see. Um, it's very gratifying and it's, it's motivating to them and to to, to the staff. Um, like you know, Jalen Hunt, for example, is a, is a kid that's made some strides. Um, you know, I saw you know Mallory has you know is looking for consistency, but you know I thought that he you know I thought that he made some strides in this in this last game, and so. You know, along with you know with Naquan and then um, and Slade, you know, and then you know Maverick, uh, you know, was is is in the mix. You know, that's uh, you know you know you got four or five guys that you can roll in there, 
and, and play stout, you know, football in the interior um, part of the line there. So, you know, that, that that's that's certainly that's certainly a, a, a bright spot and that's very encouraging. And so, um, you know, those guys, you know, looking to build depth and have as many guys to play in the trenches, offense and defense, you know, offensive line, defense line is, is critically important. And then also recruiting um, big, big people that can move people, you know, that's a, you know, that's a big part of the process, you know. All right, thanks for your time. Yep, you got it. We have time for two more before uh, the players will join the call. We'll go to uh, Rico Cooney with Spartan Magazine. Good afternoon, coach. Hey, um, can you uh, talk a little bit about <clears throat> Michael Dow's uh, progression? Seems watching him, it seems that he's gotten better and better every week and has become a real asset to your, uh, to not only the secondary, but the defense. Can you just talk a little bit about his progression and how he's um, become a, I, I, or trying to make himself a player that you have to have out on the, on the field? Yeah, I like, I like Mike. I like his approach. Um, you know, he, he can, he plays multi, he can play multiple positions. And so, um, and as he's learning more about the scheme and where he fits, um, and he's, a, he's, he's improving. And so, uh, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a guy that I, I think is going to continue to improve because he's going to, he's going to put the work in and he, and like his, his, uh, his care factor is really high, you know, so, um, and when he doesn't, and when he doesn't make plays, or when he doesn't play well, it really, really bothers him, which is the way it should be. So, um, I mean, I'm I'm not surprised that you've noticed that he's, you know, that he's that he's improved and, and he's really worked really hard, um, you know, at his game. And I think he sees he and he's a good team guy. You know, it's not just he wants to play well for himself, but. He wants to he wants to play well for the for, for our team so we're going to continue to work with him that's why I, I, I keep uh that's why I keep uh you know mentioning our medical staff and and all the protocols and what we're able to do um, in our behavior modification and that we hammer every day to it allows us to continue to practice and then play and if we can't practice if we can't play we can't get better you know, and so he's he's taking advantage of these opportunities to 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 make himself a better player, and we're helping him with that. This is a quick follow up. You said different positions. How many different positions have you had him at? As far as you know, I guess you know, down in the box or or back at coverage. Yeah, he can. You know, he can play the nickel position. He can play strong. He can play free. That he doesn't play corner. You know. Thank you. Our last question for Coach Tucker goes to Stephen Brooks of 24-7 Sports. Hey, Mel, good to see you. Um, see going you. off that a little bit, um, the nickel position is new for these guys that have come back, obviously, with this scheme that you guys have put in. Um, could you just sort of break down that position to its core in terms of what you were looking at and an ideal fit there? Obviously got a lot of different responsibilities, and we've seen a lot of different players, skill sets, body types play there already. Um, what goes into that position and what's sort of the, the prototype, I guess? Yeah, well, it, you know, it's, I'm not sure if there's a prototype. Um, that's a, that's an important position. You know, I'm used to being in nickel and dime, actually having six DBs on the field quite a bit, um, because that gives you the, the, the ability to, to match up and, uh, and, and play, uh, play, you know, multiple coverages and be able to match personnel um, and, and play and play man coverage, um, you know, when you need to and, and, and things like that. So, um, but that position is, is, is very involved because it has linebacker qualities to it, you know, in terms of run fits and things like that and setting the edge on the perimeter. And it also has uh, you know, you have to be able to cover man to man. You have to be able to drop zone. Um, you know, sometimes uh, in some schemes, you can even be in a deep part of the field and then you're called upon the blitz, you know, uh, at times. And then you have to be, able to, you have to be very adjustable 
you know, to shifts and motions and and and, diff and different types of alignments. And so, um, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into um, getting the, getting guys in in a in a position where they can play that. And you need to you need to have at least three guys that can do that um, because of injuries and things like that. And then then at some point, you know, we may e even be able to evolve to some type of dime package. Um, where you can get you know more guys on the field, more speed on the field, and some of these passing situations will be able to match up when people put more receivers in the game, you know. And also, you know, the the nickel spot is is um, you know it's uh it's critically important because um, you know sometimes you don't have an opportunity to uh, match personnel and sub because of the speed of the game or whatever. And sometimes you may have a a, a defensive back. Is actually really literally playing a linebacker position out there against some of these uh, two tight end, two receiver sets, and is is uh, it's got to be stout and it's got to it's got to hold up. So um, that's a very valuable position, and uh, you get guys that can play that spot, multiple guys that can play that spot. That's like gold, and everyone in the NFL is looking for guys that can play that can play in there because it's not it is it's hard to find guys that can do that at a high level. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yep, you got it. That's all the time we have for questions, Coach. We really appreciate the time today. Uh, we'll have players shortly, but thanks again for joining us. Yeah, man. Thank, thanks, thanks for having, thanks for having me. I appreciate everything, everything you're doing. Um, hope I'm pretty sure I'm pulling that we can get this game in, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys, seeing you guys this weekend. So stay safe. Go green. Thanks, thanks. Coach. You're. Kindness is appreciated. Thanks, Mel. We'll see you. Bye-bye.